Greetings, everyone, and welcome to 32 Manias of Mike. Oh, man, we are at a fun WrestleMania for me. Um, this is one of my favorite WrestleManias, probably the WrestleMania I've seen the most, except for maybe, like, 20 and 17. But I, I this is definitely high on my list of WrestleManias I've seen a lot. Um, we are at WrestleMania 16. Otherwise known as WrestleMania 2000 in uh, the pond in Anaheim. And uh, cool thing about this, first WrestleMania where we get Lillian Garcia singing America the Beautiful. Um, and, I mean, you guys know Lillian. She, she's really she's really good at what she does. And, um, you know, th this WrestleMania can almost be called Debut Mania. Because, holy crap. There are a lot of debuts at this WrestleMania. All right, I'm just going to break down the people who have had their first in-ring match at this WrestleMania. All right? Let's start from the top. You have um, Crash Holly, uh, Taz, Isura, Funaki, Takuma Jinoku, all the members of the Mean Street Posse. Jeez, um, there's so many people. Uh, Albert. Chris Strass made her first on-screen debut. Steve Blackman. Al Snow made his first WrestleMania match. Uh, Edge, Christian, Bubba Ray, Devon, Matt, Jeff Hardy. Terry made her in-ring debut. She had been at WrestleMania's before, obviously. The Cat made her in-ring debut. Um, let's see. China made her in-ring debut. Eddie Guerrero, Perry Saturn, Dean Malenko, Chris Benoit, Kurt Angle, Chris Jericho. Ah, uh, fucking hell. Uh, let's see. And all right, that's all the debuts. But debuting on screen as characters, you have Stephanie McMahon, Linda McMahon, um, got Chester McCheeserson. Just kidding. But yeah, just uh, looking at all those debuts, this WrestleMania is ridiculously fun. Um, all right, so we'll just start breaking it down like like I like I do for every match. Uh the first match is a tag team match with uh Big Boss Man Bull Buchanan. Now you might be thinking why wasn't Bull Buchanan mentioned in my debuts? Uh we clearly haven't talked about him before. Except we have. He was one of the guys in the Truth Commission. Um hold on, I'm looking at my notes here. I believe he was uh recon or sniper. I forget. He, he was one of them. He was definitely one of the Truth Commission that wasn't Kurgan. He's definitely not that tall and wasn't an extra in um, Sherlock Holmes. But, but uh, cool thing about this is that the God, they're going up against the Godfather and D'Lo Brown, who are both pimps at this point. Um, and uh, they are sung to the ring by Ice-T. Yeah, Ice-T. Um, because the, I'm trying to think what the, uh, the album that, that was out was called. I think it was forcible entry. Um, yeah, I think, I think it was forcible entry where a lot of like the, uh, the wrestlers got rap themed, uh, remixes for their entrances. And, um, Ice-T came out with the Pimpin' 8, Pimpin' 8 Easy Man song. Uh, oh God, it, it's, it's great. It's just to see Ice T coming out of the Godfather and D'Lo, and they're kicking off things hot because Godfather and D'Lo are hugely popular. At least you know the Ho Train is, but uh, it's a good match, decent stuff. Um, but Bobby Can and Bossman get the win. A lot of heels win at this WrestleMania. It's really um, it's kind of weird. That a lot of heels win at this WrestleMania, and it's, I mean, there are a couple big face payoffs, but. A lot of heels. A lot, a lot of heels. Um, so uh, moving on, we got the Hardcore Battle Royal. Now, for those of you who don't remember, when Crash Holly won the Hardcore Championship, he said he would defend the title 24-7. If you've never heard of this before, um, oh, God. I believe Chuck Taylor did something similar a few years ago on Instagram where he would defend it against anyone on uh, his Instagram feed and put up little videos and everything like that. But Crash Holly was the originator of this, and it was fantastic. It was such a fun gimmick. 
I'd love to see them do it now, especially with like the the age of Twitter and Snapchat and all that kinds of stuff. Like I think it'd be really, really fun. You can use social media to the nth degree with this. But this match effectively um was the end of the twenty four seven title rule. And Crash was putting it up against I wanna say it was thirteen or fifteen guys. And I didn't even mention all the guys that are in this match. Uh I think uh, both headbangers were in there. Hardcore Holly was in there, obviously. Um, the uh, both accolades were in there. Farouk and Bradshaw. Actually, is this Farouk's first debut? Yeah, th- this this is Farouk's first debut at WrestleMania too. So yeah, there's a bunch of guys in there. Um, a title changed hands ten times. Ten times. Um, Crash lost it within thirty seconds, which is great. Uh, he, uh, this marks the first title win for guy for the guys in the Main Street Posse, for Funaki. Uh, I think no, Viscera had won tag team champions before as uh, Mabel, but but yeah, it's a fun, it's a bonkers match. They go all over the place. They start in the ring for most of it. They go backstage, um, then they bring it back out to the crowd when I believe one of the Main Street Posse, oh bless them, they get busted open like badly i think uh pete gas was the one who really got ripped up and i want to say something joey abs kind of reminded me of a time displaced bobby Roode. i'm not sure why i'm I, i'm gonna see if sword can like put up a picture of joey abs in the description here or just look up joey abs and picture him as a time traveling bobby Roode. it's a very odd dichotomy but they look extremely similar. It might just be the hair. I'm not sure. But um, yeah, so uh, Hardcore Holly, the and the finish of this match was kind of botched a little bit because it looked like it wasn't supposed to be of Hardcore Holly winning, but he actually grabbed the candy jar from the, from the announce desk of JR and King and used it to win the match by beating his cousin Crash. Uh, but yeah, um, so moving along, uh, we get a brand new tag team, two brand new tag teams, actually, because the first thing you see are, well, let's be clear two giant breasts because this is 2000 and that's kind of what WWF does. It's Trish Stratus, ladies and gentlemen, future Hall of Famer, Trish Stratus, future umpteen time women's champion, Trish Stratus. This was back before she could really wrestle and she was just managing her tag team. You guessed it. T and A. The ampersand, not an N. It's it's the good TNA, not the bad TNA. Uh, well, all right, there is, you get what I mean. But uh, it's Test and Albert, and they're going up against the tag team of Head Cheese. Now, uh, if you don't know who Head Cheese is, it's Alice Snow and Steve Blackman. Why they were called Head Cheese, I don't really remember. I think it was a joke by Al Snow. Um when they were in green Bay, cause he put a cheese head on Steve Blackman and Al snow, of course, carried head to ringside. So he said that they could be called the tag team of head cheese. And it stuck. <laughs> Ironically, you know, at least for as long as that tag team stuck around, they didn't stick around long, but again, we get another heel win here. TNA, you know, Trish Stras leads her men to victory. And, Afterwards, Steve Blackman and Al Snow beat the crap out of a midget dressed in a giant cheese outfit. Yeah, that's a real thing. Chester McCheeserson. He 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 was a thing. Uh, very odd. This is a weird time. This is a weird time in wrestling, guys. Let, let, let's just call it what it is. But a not weird time is the next match. Oh, buddy, the tag team championships. This is when tag team wrestling, I think, truly came back to WWF. Because, I mean, we've already had two tag team matches. Um, the Acolytes were in the Battle Royal. Kayantai was in the Battle Royal. There are a lot of great tag teams in WWF at this point. And, uh, actually, this WrestleMania is notorious for being the only WrestleMania that has one singles match. And that singles match is Terry Reynolds versus the Cat. <laughs> which we'll get to, but it's really kind of great. Like there, WWF has so much talent. Like this, 
probably was the one that spurned them the idea of saying WrestleMania can no longer be three hours or two hours and 40 minutes or whatever. Because this one has an overrun of about 20 minutes. Yeah, uh, it's a little bit longer, but I, I know a lot of people don't like this one. I think this WrestleMania is great. I think it's really a lot of fun. And I'll get into why I've seen it so many times in a little bit. But um, Triangle Liar Match, Tag Team Championships, Edge and Christian, Dudley Boys, Hardy Boys. You, that's all I need to tell you to let you know how good this match is. This was before TLC. This is before it got watered down with money in the bank and stuff like that. This is only the second ladder match at WrestleMania. And it's only the second ladder match Edge and Christian and the Hardy Boys have had. And Dudley's have never been in any in WWF at this point. And god damn, it's just, it's just so much fun. Jeff doing the huge swanton in the aisle way. Uh, Matt taking a big bump at the end. And this spurned on the Edge and Christian heel turn. This was the last time they were faces for a long time. Uh, the, I, the next night on Raw, they did a handshake. And actually, was it? No, a, after the Terry Invitational, they did a handshake. After this one, uh, Edge and Christian <laughs> celebrated by bringing out midget versions of the Hardys and Dudleys, I believe, and shaking their hands. But yeah, um, really, really great match. Just tons of high spots, tons of fun. Great storytelling by all the guys involved. Uh, see this match. If you've never seen it before, do yourself a favor and see this match. It's great. All right. But after that, you need a palate cleanser. Everyone does. Uh, so we get the first um, almost full frontal nudity out of WrestleMania. Yeah. Um, there, there was a segment backstage with the cat trying to decide what she was going to wear. She was naked because the cat. Uh, she was she was with May Young backstage. May was doing the naked gun thing with like you know covering up the boobs with water bottles and stuff like that. It's it's a funny little segment. Um, Jerry Lawler overreacting to his girlfriend being naked is kind of hilarious. And the match Terry Runnels with the fabulous Moolah versus the Cat with May Young. Val Venus is the referee. They're both trying to hit on Val. the The whole point of the match is to throw your opponent to the outside of the ring. It, it's it's not pretty, but it's pretty at the same time because they're two attractive women just being the crap out of each other. It, you know, it is what it is. It's a palate cleanser, and this is before really, like, I mean, to give you an indication, Stephanie is the women's champion at this time. So not exactly the best title defense is going on in the world. But um, so I'm going to move on from that quickly because we have a six-person intergender tag team match. Yeah, this is WWE. We have that. This isn't Lucha Underground. We can do this again, guys. Granted, it's too cool. And China, China, a little bit different story, but you can still pull this off today, I think. They're going up against the Radicals, Eddie, Perry, and Dean. Oh, this is so much fun. Eddie Guerrero. Oh, God bless him. He's Eddie Guerrero steals this whole match from everyone. He He's so far ahead of his time, so much more talented than the other people in the ring. And no offense to all the other guys in the ring. Eddie, you can just tell Eddie has it together. Like, he's not, he, he's, like, this is right when he figured out the Latino Heat gimmick. And it's, it's really, really well done. It's so great. It's a lot of fun. Too Cool does get the win because, of course, of course, China has to get the win. Also, China, I'd say, has the coolest entrance this WrestleMania. She came out with a fucking... A firework cannon and shot the fireworks into the sky. Pretty cool. But uh, now we move on to something that hasn't been done at WrestleMania before, and I think we could do it again. It's it's Kurt Angle, and this is this has been his debut year. This has been the year of Kurt Angle. He won the European Championship, and he won the Intercontinental Championship. So he called himself the Euro Continental Champion. Now, he was being advised by Bob Backlund at this point, and Bob Backlund booked him into a two-fall triple threat match with Chris Benoit and Chris Jericho. Now, I'm going to say um, all the stuff with Chris Benoit aside, we're just going to treat him as a wrestler. Just get There's really no other way around it, because especially once I get to WrestleMania 20, it's going to get real awkward real fast. So, I mean, it. It's a great match. And honestly, this match is the reason I've seen this WrestleMania so many times. Uh, because this WrestleMania was so big. Excuse me, Leon out of the shot for a second. They came out of books 
on this WrestleMania. Um, WrestleMania 2000, because WrestleMania 2000 had what they called an all day long. Like, there's a picture of Triple H and Steph from this WrestleMania. The all day long experience was their almost their first foray into constant programming. Uh, I remember this because I watched a good majority of it. It was a 12 hour long day. Like they started at noon or 11 o'clock in the morning and they just did constant coverage. Like they did one hour per WrestleMania or thereabouts, like about maybe about 30, 40 minutes per WrestleMania. Kind of like what I'm doing now, except I'm going all the way to 32. They stopped at 15, but, uh, yeah, it was awesome. It came, that book I just showed you guys came with a whole DVD that showed everything from the all-day long footage. But the DVD of this actual event has alternate commentary of the two-fall triple threat match. Three different versions of it, actually. One with Kurt Angle, one with Chris Benoit, and one with Chris Jericho. It's really amazing. Like, And I kind of wish WWE would do this more. Like have out-of-character or in-character commentary on matches from the guys that are in it. They do this sometimes, but I really wish they would do it more often because it's a really cool insight into the world of professional wrestling. Now, um, the first fall is for the Intercontinental title. Not exactly sure why. I think maybe they wanted to make the European title feel more important. But uh, Chris Benoit beats Chris Jericho to get the European title, to get the Intercontinental title. And Kurt Angle's pissed off, you know. And then Kurt Angle loses again because Chris Jericho beats Chris Benoit. Really kind of funny. Kurt Angle loses both belts without getting defeated once. It's it's fantastic. Um, but yeah, definitely you need to see that match. It's not even that long. Like the Triangle Liar match is, a mu is much longer than that. Um, but yeah, so uh, moving along, we get... Um, we get our Pete Rose spot, kind of. Well, well, or we do, but it's um. Now you you guys remember Tori from from last year's WrestleMania from WrestleMania 15, right? DX Tori, the one I told you about, the one that wrestled Sable. Well, this is when Tori is in full DX mode after she has turned her back on Kane and aligned herself with X Pac, and it's Rikishi and Kane versus X Pac and Road Dog, and it's a short match. Like th there's not. There's not too much uh, going on. Um, but yeah, basically, this match is all about the post-match. It, it's it's a palate cleanser for the main event because we only have one more match after this. Um, the San Diego Chicken comes in after Rikichi and Kane get the win because Kane gets his revenge on X-Pac, as you, as you usually see at WrestleMania. The San Diego, San Diego Chicken comes in to dance with Rikishi and Too Cool who run out to the ring to dance because that's what they do. And they did, they dance with China earlier. So why not dance again? Um, the chicken starts dancing and the bet, the coolest part of the, is Kane and Paul bear are just standing in the corner, just looking disapprovingly at the chicken because a year before Pete Rose was dressed as a chicken and tried to attack Kane. So it's, it's kind of great. And after the dancing Kane, throttles the San Diego, San Diego chicken, grabs him by a throat, and Pete Rose sneaks in from behind and tries to hit Kane with a baseball bat. It's fantastic. Rikishi stops him, um, scares Pete Rose into the corner, and Pete Rose gets a choke slam, and then he gets the stink face. I mean, Pete Rose, I'm going to say this, is the best WrestleMania celebrity. I haven't seen anyone else that comes close yet. Pete Rose is the epitome of a WrestleMania celebrity. He really is. He's not afraid to be humiliated because there are other there are other celebrities that don't want to really play and have fun. Like I'd say Bob Uecker is maybe second in WrestleMania celebrities. I'll I'll probably do a list of WrestleMania celebrities when I'm all said and done with this. And no, The Rock doesn't count. Um, but yeah, a really really fun match. It's it's short, you know. It's skippable, but it's a good palate cleanser for what the main event is. Because the main event is a McMahon in every corner. That's right. We have a fatal four-way elimination match. Oh, 
buddy, this is good. Triple H is the champion with his wife, Stephanie McMahon Helmsley, in the corner. Again, going up against The Rock with Vince in his corner, Mick Foley with Linda in his corner, and Big Show with Shane in his corner. It's really cool to see all, all of this going on. Linda doesn't really serve that much of a purpose other than she got Mick in the match. But it's it's kind of a cool dichotomy going on. Um, The match is really fun. The match is long, too, because it's essentially... You have to win by pin. There's no like, um, there's no like bullshit DQs or countouts or anything like that, which I greatly enjoy. I appreciate that. I that's what I want to see at my main event. And um, first of all, uh, Big Show gets taken out first because he's the biggest threat and makes the most sense. Um, and then uh, Mick Foley is taken out after um, stopping The Rock from delivering the People's Elbow on Triple H. I. I it, it was it's an interesting choice, but like I think because well, the Rock and Sock connection were working together for a while against Triple H, and then for some reason Foley just turned on the Rock. It, it was kind of cool. It's kind of cool, unexpected. The crowd didn't like it. The crowd definitely didn't like it, but I thought it was enjoyable. And uh, but then Mick Foley got eliminated, you know, because it's his retirement. We'll never see Mick Foley wrestle again. We will several times. But, um, yeah, so, yeah, another fake retirement in wrestling. And then it comes down to probably what it should have been all along, Triple H and The Rock. Uh, they, have, they have a good back and forth. And Triple H, the first ever heel to leave WrestleMania with the championship. First ever. Yeah, I mean, you know, we give Triple H a lot of crap, but and I, I think it was the right call. I think it was the right call, given how things shook out afterwards, because you had Vince McMahon turning on The Rock and bringing his family back together, which led to a lot of fun stuff, too. And plus, why not Triple H? He had just won it a few months ago. Like, from, he had just won it a few months ago. So I, I think I think it was an okay call. It's not like The Rock would never get his title shot again. Spoiler alert, The Rock will be defending next year. Uh <laughs> But yeah, like I, I think Triple H was the right call. Maybe, maybe the only time I agree with Triple H leaving WrestleMania with a belt. Uh, we'll get to those decisions much later down the line. But yeah, I think it, I think it was a good call. I think it was a lot of fun. And to send the crowd home happy, The Rock um, gets the Rock Bomb and People's Elbow Steph. Which you know, hey. Uh, Triple H and The Rock, they traded it back and forth many times. I think this actually led to the Iron Man match, which that's a great match, too. Uh, I think that had the return of The Undertaker and all that stuff. Like, ah, uh, American Badass Undertaker, too. Spoiler alert, my favorite version of The Undertaker. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so Triple H leaves with the belt, and we leave WrestleMania 2000, WrestleMania 16, and we're going to the Houston Astrodome for WrestleMania 17. I know where this one is because WrestleMania 17 is touted as perhaps the greatest WrestleMania of all time. Is it? Guess you'll have to tune in to find out because I will be talking about that one next time on 32 Manias with Mike. Feel free to hit me up on at MadMike4883 on the Twitter machine. Hit us up on Facebook, on Twitter. Hit up the hashtag MM to talk about this stuff. Leave some comments here in the YouTube. And uh, we'll see you in Houston for WrestleMania X7.